MeasuringHistory.com presents Galileo Goes to Jail. Bum, bum, bum. I want to start with the details of the chart that's in question. This is the day that Galileo broke down and admitted that he committed heresy, that Ptolemy was right, that he was wrong, and that Copernicus was wrong. And what we see here, now the outer, the outer ring in gray is the transits that are in other words, what the, where the planets were on the date of the gelling and the dates we'll see for most of the transits here also include the interrogation process because everything happened between April and June of 1633 as far as the trial is concerned. So on the outer ring, we see on the bottom Saturn in Sagittarius and then on the top we see Pluto in Taurus. Mars in Gemini, Mercury in Gemini, and Jupiter in Gemini. Those are transiting, and therefore Saturn and these planets were opposite at the time of the trial. As we can see here, it's looking at the wave, we have Saturn opposite Pluto. It was active since 1631. So what I mean by active is by the fact that it, even though the trend is, is not exact, by 1633, it's active in Galileo's chart, and also as we see per Pope Urban's chart. Pope Urban, try to say that a few times quickly. And so we're getting the Saturn opposition falling right on top of what is in his natal chart, which is Uranus-Neptune opposition. So basically we're putting the 1631 Saturn opposition, so the 1617 Saturn-Pluto 1648 wave, goes right on top of the of the 1478 Uranus Neptune 1650 wave and that's where we show how people make history the transits in people's charts show how people make history and this chart is, happens to be for someone particularly famous and he's famous for being a scientist who created our modern system of physics he broke away from Aristotle he broke away from Plato he broke away from the church that was all what was what always on trial for his trial for heresy for advocating for the dialogue or writing the dialogue of the two world systems, which in that book he used a fictional character, which the Jesuits convinced the Pope it was the Pope who was a fictional character defending Ptolemy using the words that the Pope used to defend Ptolemy's system. And therefore, since the Copernican system won in the book, it was an affront to the Pope. Now, so we see the politics, so that's where we see the transits, where the other transits, the Venus and the Mercury and the Jupiter and the Mars, all of those are the decisions that Galileo, Galileo made in writing the book and using that fictional character that may or may have not been the Pope. So that's how we see, that's the reasons why we can say people make history. We also should note that Galileo and Galileo and Pope Urban VIII were born in the 1560s, which was a very volatile decade. It had the French Wars of Revolution. It was the 1564, the year Galileo was born. The Council of Trent came out, which was with the Counter-Reformation, was its biggest production. And the Counter-Reformation basically doubled down on its fight against heresy, i.e. Protestantism, i.e. Calvinism and Lutheranism, so that was the af atmosphere in which Galileo was born, and he was very much aware of that, and of course Galileo and Urban VIII were friends, so they were aware of all of these things, they were, grew up together, they were contemporaries, and one of the things about the 1560s is it's one of the only times where you have the four outer planets, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, and it's called a grand square, it's two T-squares back to back, so we see the T-square in his chart in Galileo's chart, and we can actually see it in Pope Urban's chart. There we see the frequencies for the waves, so we know that this, these things like grand squares don't happen a lot in history. In fact, it's the only one I can find over a 7,500 year period. So, but basically, when we we looking when we're looking at the transits for Galileo at the time, from the time that he was summoned to Rome up until the up until his trial, Saturn opposite Pluto is the dominant transit and that shows up in his chart and basically what we're getting at the trial is two stellium square each other the stellium in Galileo's natal chart Sun 
Mercury, Pluto, and Venus being squared by Pluto, Mars, Mercury, and Jupiter. And that square is also interacting with the Saturn transit, which highlights the Uranus in his natal chart. So basically the Saturn-Uranus conjunction is square the four planets in that stellium in Pisces. And then, of course, it's opposite Mars and Neptune. Quite a lot of transits going on. Wouldn't want to have those transits when you're facing the Inquisition. And the other interesting thing to look at is when we go back to the time when Galileo started discovered the four moons in 1609, we see that Uranus and Jupiter were top or were conjunct Mars and Neptune and therefore opposite. Now this is by transits, Jupiter and Uranus, and therefore opposite Uranus is his common Uranus opposite Uranus. It happens to everybody around the age of 42, the midlife crisis, etc. We also should note that Neptune in the first, in the second house is just past having a transit opposition to the stellium in his sixth and seventh house of so the four planets that we were talking about there. So Neptune is involved there. And so if we look at the whole episode from 1609 to the time he was jailed as one episode, we should include the fact that the Jupiter Uranus transit of 1609 set off everything and is sensitive, is a sensitive point in the whole in the whole process from 1609 till the time he was jailed in 1633. And we should not, we should emphasize that the importance of what this trial did, it basically shifted the scientific revolution to northern climes, to Britain mainly. It, uh, the, Fra the Latin countries, France, Italy, and Spain, because of Catholic influence, avoided the scientific revolution and avoided saying that Copernicus was right. And, of course, that had major ramifications later. And, of course, it also, because the church advocated for Ptolemy and Aristotle and Plato and basically lost the argument in public opinion, that also meant that ultimately Galileo being right undermined the church and helped usher in the Age of Reason, which began in 1650, about the time of the next Uranus-Neptune wave beginning. All right, and I hope you like that. Uh, there will be many more videos on Galileo. There's will be much more on the Galileo on the Waves blog, measuringhistory.com. And also please go to Measuring History on Facebook, like Measuring History on Facebook. What, by the way, when you're on the Waves blog, click on anything, search. If you need to buy a book, it's a good place to buy a book. Lots of books recommended or uh, basically uh, associated with a lot of the articles there. So it's a one place, one place shop for everything measuringhistory.com, the Waves blog, and of course, subscribe to the Measuring History channel on YouTube. Thanks for watching.